This video contains a few things to check for if you're having difficulty running the Standard Time Web Edition. What we're talking about is the Standard Time timesheet that is accessed through a web browser. You can see the browser here and the URL. Back to IIS, this is the web server configuration tool that you would use to set up the Standard Time Web Edition. It is called Internet Information Services, or IIS. So this video contains a few things just to look for if you're having difficulty getting the uh, Standard Time Web Edition to start up. So the first thing you probably would want to check for is the default website. If you right click on that, choose Manage uh, Website, you want to make sure that it's started. If it's not started, you probably won't be able to gain access to the Standard Time application. Another thing you want to do is then try to browse to that. If you can't browse to the default website, you probably won't be able to browse to the standard time virtual directory. When you browse, you'll probably get a window like this. This is the default window that uh, IIS has for the default website. And so just make sure that you can uh, browse to the default website. Uh, because you'll need to later then browse to the ST virtual directory that you see here. The next thing you'll probably want to check is to uh, go over to the control panel and then go into turn Windows features on or off. And so this dialog box pops up underneath the Internet Information Services. You then have World Wide Web and then underneath that Application Development Features. Make sure that you have ASP.NET turned on and enabled, ASAPI and filters. Make sure you have default document and static content. So those are just some of the things you have to make sure that are turned on on the Windows features in order for IIS to serve up the standard time application. Now back to IIS, another thing you'll probably want to do or may want to do after you've installed uh, certain things is to right click and then restart the uh, service. You'll see the ASAPI and CGI restrictions under the top level node here. Go ahead and double click on that and depending on whether this is a 64-bit machine or 32-bit you'll see a different path name. Make sure the correct one is allowed for ASP.NET. Then go over to the application pools. You want to make sure you have an application pool for ASP.NET, uh, either a classic or an integrated pipeline here. At the time of this video, Standard Time is using version 4.5 or version 4 works fine. Obviously, there's going to be newer versions uh, later after this video, so make sure that you have that installed and that it is started. If you can add a classic pipeline as well. You may need to try that if there's any difficulty. But again, make sure the status says that it is started. Now go over to the ST Virtual Directory, click on Basic Settings, and you'll see that application pool here. You can click Select, and if you need to choose and try the Classic, if you have difficulty, go ahead and try that. But you'll have to make sure that that application pool is running and ready to use. Now, if you're able to launch the Standard Time Web Edition, but unable to authenticate with SQL Server, you'll probably need to then go into your web.config file. Now, you're going to find that file in the Program Files or in the Program Files x86 folder. There will be another folder named Standard Time, and then inside of that there'll be a web folder. And so the file we're looking for is web.config. Go ahead and open it up in Notepad. And the first thing you should probably look for is the server. We have localhost here as a default. You'll want to change that to the name of your SQL Server box. Then make sure you have the correct name for your standard time. And then you have your username for the login. That's the SQL login. And then the password as well. So web.config is the place to make those changes. Now let's just switch over to the SQL Server Management Studio. Underneath Security, you'll have Logins, and then make sure your web.config file points to this login. Let's right-click on that, choose Properties. Make sure that it has SQL Server Authentication and that you have SQL Server and Windows Authentication both enabled for this server. Sometimes people will uncheck these enforce policies because you may not gain access if the uh, password has expired. Set the default database to standard time. Over in the 
user mapping, go ahead and click on the standard time database and make sure you have db underscore owner rights enabled. That would allow you to gain access to SQL. So those are some of the things that you can check. If you have difficulty with that, go ahead and contact the tech support department at Scout West, www.stdtime.com. And uh, still having difficulty, we'll go through these options and others and uh, make sure you're up and running. Hope this helps.